We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing all right. I'm gonna. We're gonna crack this before I turn the noise gate on. You ready? Mm, that one wasn't very loud. Nope, that one wasn't. That one wasn't very loud. Right. That's probably not going to come through on the podcast. Probably not. All right, we're not going to waste any more time no. here. We are going to go right into it. <laughs> we here. have a lot to do today. A lot to do today, and we're going to start off, well, this whole episode, we're going to be talking about the off-season edition of Know Your Enemy, that team up north. Yes, we are spending an entire episode. Before you click away. No, 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 no. Do Before not click, click away. away. On the, do not click away on this one. Watch this entire <laughs> thing and then send it to that one friend of yours who is a Michigan fan. Yes. Do not yes. click away on this one. I promise you. Yes. Even though we're talking about that team up north, I think I think you'll enjoy this one here. So let's let's go ahead and st- let's start off by talking about the coaching staff here, Jared. Lots Obvious lots of changes here. If you if you haven't already know, you're probably living under a rock right now. <laughs> lots of uh, lots of coaching changes here ever since Harbaugh decided to pack up and head out of Ann Arbor to head to head over to LA. And he's and he took quite a bit of coaches coaches with him. Uh, most of he, the defensive staff. Yep, mostly the defensive staff there. Yes, so. Uh, the defensive coordinator, uh, min- mentor, uh, the defensive back, clink uh, scale, and the defensive line coach, Elston, are heading not, over to L.A. And not just the defensive backs coach, but he's also the co-DC. He took both of the defensive DCs with him to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, and on top of that, he took one of their, um, like... Uh, one of their like better defensive graduate assistants on the defensive side to Los Angeles. And he took the strength and conditioning coach yep. and people, I, I, if you're watching this podcast, you probably understand that like the strength and conditioning coach is essentially the head coach of the off season. Football fans, football nerds understand how important that role is, especially in college football. Um, it's a, it's a huge deal. You, both of their defensive coordinators, their strength and conditioning coach, and uh, one or two of their young offensive talents as well, or uh, young yep, yep. coaching talents as well, not offensive, defensive coaching talents. Yeah. So there's there's not much. It, it's kind of the uh, uh, the meme where you're just looking around, looking around in the in the room here and there's nobody left here. You're just like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Nobody left here on the defensive side. No one left. Uh, well, by yeah. the way, literally so, no one, the entire defensive coaching staff is now gone. Uh, they didn't all go to LA. Uh, Jay Harbaugh went to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, a, a senior defensive analyst by the name of Doug Mallory uh, is going to Baltimore. The constant shuffling back and forth between the, well, now former Harbaugh staff uh, and the other Harbaugh staff continue to go back and forth, back and forth. The, the, the pipeline between the two teams is, is at least for now, still alive and well. But the biggest question, the, the biggest the biggest coach, though, the biggest contributor contributor to this team, Jared, is Connor. Is Connor going to stay around? <laughs> Connor Stallions, Kyle, I don't know if you know this, was fired during the season. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Did you miss that one? <laughs> oh, Kyle, you missed that one. Uh, by the way, Dang. speaking of the defensive coaches, so so was uh, Chris, uh, yeah. Chris Partridge. Um, yeah. he, uh, just a reminder, because it's just what we're doing here. This is the this is what we're this is what we're doing here. Uh, was fired on November 17th, as most of you probably remember. Um, He was, uh, the university alleged that he, quote, failed to abide by the university directive to not discuss ongoing NCAA investigations with anyone associated with the Michigan football program or others. 
There were rumors about specifically what he did. Those aren't confirmed. We don't need to talk about them. And as far as like the offensive coaching staff, um, again, a friendly reminder that uh, co-offensive coordinator Matt Weiss uh, was fired uh, over a year ago. But, you know, he was supposed to be a part of the, the staff last year. Uh for some sort of computer crime that we don't have a whole lot of details on even a year later. Um, just we, he inappropriately accessed computer accounts is, is to this day, what we know for a fact. That, that, that just sounds like a, uh, a lawyer term for uh, hacking. <laughs> Kinda. I mean, or unwanted, he, unwanted access. Uh, unapproved I guess access. That's appropriate access. Yeah, that, that that is the same thing, I guess. Yeah. So 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 what's what's next here? Who's who's left? Who's left over at uh, Michigan? Well, one one more departure, it's... Kyle. One more departure. You missed one. Well. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. maybe a departure. Probably a departure. Uh, we actually we haven't heard from Mike Hart in a while. Uh, his status is unknown. His contract ended at the end of the season. Uh, he, no announcement has been made. Uh, he's not been seen around the Michigan offices. He's not recruiting. He's not going on recruiting trips. It appears that Mike Hart is no longer with the Michigan coaching staff. It appears that he's not anywhere right now. He's a man without a contract at the moment. Um, I, I don't know. I, my money, my money's on that. My cart's not coming back. That would be my money. I mean, but... all that's where all indicators are. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, hell, as much as we might want to like make fun of certain members of the Ohio State coaching staff who we all know weren't going to come back and who we all know contracts are going to expire, those dudes were out there still recruiting, even though literally everybody knew that they weren't going to be coming back. Yeah. Mike Hart has not been seen with the team since the championship game. I don't know. All right. Well, let's let's move on to the who's 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 left. Who's who's left and what what addition has Michigan done to this uh to this team that was just just a month ago won the national title. Asterix. Um Asterix, yes. Obviously, Sharon Moore gets, you know, elevated to head coach, right? He's the new he's the new head coach. Okay. Sharon Moore's new head that, coach. That, that, but, that tells me that tells me one thing, Jared. That tells me one thing. No, but nobody nobody outside of the Michigan program wants in, wanted to come in, and that's and that's a big thing. Just like, like to fill in all of these spots here, nobody nobody really wants in i mean with with such a big I mean, cloud they've over this some program guys. the un, uncertainty of what's going to happen the next year or so w- would you want to be part of this program i wouldn't so they, they had to hire from it within they had to and they've done a lot of hiring from within um they have done a lot of hiring from within so shrone Moore, your first hire from within he Moves on from offensive coordinator slash interim coach. He coached a lot of football games for Michigan this year. And to me, I mean, and Kyle, you can certainly make and the argument. why arg- is that, Jared? And why is that? Because he was on the staff? <laughs> no, why Why Moore was, the, Moore was already a head coach. Oh, we'll get to the scandals later. We'll get to the scandals later. <laughs> We're not there yet in the document, Kyle. All right, all right. Now... We can discuss Sharon Moore. Like, is it a smart move to promote a coach who we already know for a fact, because he was suspended, was involved in one of the two, he was suspended for the first game of the year last year, was already, he's already involved in the less serious recruiting scandal. And as the offensive coordinator was almost assuredly involved in the sign stealing scandal, like 
he was involved, like allegedly, 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 but you know, we know, but we know legally, I'm going to say allegedly, but we know. Uh, so does it make sense to hire this guy to your offensive court or to your head coaching position when he's actively a part of the scandal that has, it's going to lead to the NCAA dropping a hammer of unknown size and unknown strength onto your program. He's going to, I think he's going to, in my opinion, NCAA is going to show cause sure and more. He's going to get a show cause and recent NCAA rule updates have made it far more prohibitive to have a show caused coach on your staff. Yep. Having a show caused coach on your staff will lead to, and in this case with Michigan, I will say increased scholarship losses, financial penalties, So from that end, it doesn't make sense. On the other side, it does kind of make sense because of all the things Kyle already talked about as far as, okay, who are you going to go get? And it also makes sense from a standpoint of like, you just won the national title, Asterix. You just won the, you just won the national title, Asterix. But at the same time, so I mean, so like there's this, you know, it's sort of like Ohio State elevating Ryan Day. It's like, we got a good thing going. Let's keep the band together. There's no need to totally, you know, clean house. And the, all of that makes total sense, except for the looming ban hammer over the university right now. That's yep. the one part of that that makes this not make sense. Everything yep. about this, you could draw direct parallels between this and the urban day situation. As far as like, your coach was suspended. This was your interim coach. He now becomes your head coach. It all makes sense. Except for the fact that Sharon Moore was a part of the scandal that's led to this issue. Mm -hmm. So who, who, who on the, so let's, let's start with the, I know kind of going out of order here, Jared, but we were talking about the, you're talking about the offense here. So what's left on the offense here? Uh, I think, I think most of the offensive staff is going to, be still there just going to be reshuffling a lot especially with more originally the offensive coordinator now the head coach um he's promoted the quarterback coach uh, campbell to the offensive coordinator position yep uh so another hire here, from within mm -hmm. uh newsom will take over as the ol coach duties newsom is moving over um moves over to the tight end coach where he served the past two years move over um, from the tight end coach. He, he was the tight end coach. He's now the yeah, offensive line there, coach. Yeah. The offensive line coach position was open because Sharon Moore was the offensive coordinator slash offensive line coach. Yeah. So someone coming, coming over though, from, from outside the program eh, is uh, Kazula. Yeah. Um, from UMass. Um, but he, he was an analyst for Michigan um, a yeah. couple of years ago, but, uh, but that's it. Um, unsure about the running back coach, as Jared mentioned earlier about Mike Hart. I anticipate, anticipate it's going to be somebody new that comes in. But I, I don't. I, I'd be surprised if Mike Hart's there uh, for the 2024 season. Yeah, I mean it's we're approaching a month of no contact publicly that we know about. Publicly that we yeah. know about, no contact with the university. It's odd. It's very, very odd in a situation. That would be very, very odd if he went like a month, no contact. And then, you know, while, while the entire college football world is out there recruiting, he's not. Yep. Yep. I, I don't know how to make it more obvious than that, that despite no official word, I, I cannot see him returning to Michigan. Yeah. So moving to, moving to the defensive side, as mentioned, Complete overhaul. Complete overhaul here. Uh, they did get somebody outside the Michigan program. Uh, they got uh, former Giants Ravens defensive coordinator uh, Martindale uh, as their new defensive coordinator. 
Uh, Proving once again that the Baltimore to Ann Arbor mm, pipeline yep. alive and well. Still, now, he spent still. two years in New York in between. You know, you, sometimes you don't get a direct flight. It's fine. Yeah. So, so let's, so, so what, 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 what about him? What, what do we need to know about him? Well, he's, he's originally a Dayton person. He's originally from Dayton. Yep. Um, he's had some recruiting success in Ohio. So I think this is something just to well keep an eye on. I wouldn't say that. Uh, he in theory will help with recruiting in Ohio. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to like and dislike about this hire. I think Ohio State fans immediately jumped on this because he he left he left New York in some not great circumstances. Um, yeah. One of you know one of the controversies being that there were accusations or rumors, whatever of of him undermining his young coach, his young head coach that he was working for, and you're bringing him in to work with a young head coach. It's it's something to keep an eye on. Um, mm-hmm. So high safe fans very quick to mock this hire, but I, I do like the hire in many ways. One again with the looming NCAA ban hammer over Michigan, you weren't going to get the defensive equivalent to Chip Kelly. That that wasn't going to happen. Nope. nope. Um. You know, there's he runs a similar defense. He was essentially. Uh, Jesse Minter's boss in Baltimore. Um, he was the defensive coordinator while Minter was there as a defensive assistant and DB coach. They run similar defenses. So again, if you're trying to keep the proverbial band together, this is a good sidestep of, this is a good sort of way of doing that. He's obviously from outside the program, as Kyle points out, but he's the, you know, he is of the same coaching tree as your previous defensive coaching staff. As Kyle points out, he's from the Dayton area. Michigan's had a lot of success recruiting within Ohio recent years. That could help with that. Um, Keeping that going. um, He has eight years of experience in college football. He has 20 years of experience in the NFL, uh, including, um, six of those years in the NFL as a defensive coordinator with a Super Bowl win at Baltimore. So he's a Super Bowl winning defensive coordinator. Yep. That being said, I said he spent 20 years. He has 20 years NFL experience. Well, those are all consecutive. Yes. Yeah. I was just about to say that it's been 20 years since he's, since he's been at a college program too. So, and that program was Western. Was it Western Kentucky? It was a directional Kentucky. It was a, I, I forget. It's not in the notes. It was at a directional Kentucky. He the the biggest school he ever coached for in college was Cincinnati, and this is Cincinnati circa the nineties. This isn't like modern Cincinnati even. This is back when there were six power conferences, and Cincinnati wasn't in any of them. Yep. Yep. So. Even to say Cincinnati is the biggest college job he's ever had is probably may, maybe not true. Yeah. Quite possibly that's, not that's true. It. But that's it, Jared. That's that's he is the sole person on the on the defensive side. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's that that's is, just that's the defensive coaching staff right now. He was just yep, hired just this week. Um mm-hmm. or last week, I guess when people actually listen to this. He was just hired last week. Uh you know, so he's going to bring in a defensive coaching staff, obviously. But as we record this, he's the only defensive coach on the staff. Mm-hmm. And they promoted from within their special teams analyst, uh, Brown, J.B. Brown, to their new special teams coordinator. Not a fan of the uh, specialized special teams coordinator at the college football level, for what it's worth. Yeah, well... As, as we've discussed it. many times in relation to Ohio State, not a fan of the dedicated. Because, like, the old special teams coordinator was Jay Harbaugh, who was also the safeties coach. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense to me. Uh, this apparently, from at least what I've seen so far, uh, Brown is going to be the special teams coordinator, period. Uh, it should also yeah. be noted that uh, Don Martindale, also known as Wink, 
uh, Wink Martindale is probably going to be the linebackers coach as well. So they they do have a they do have a linebackers coach. Yep. They have a defensive coordinator and a linebackers coach. Uh, never mind the fact that he's the same guy. All right, that's that is the coaching staff. Um, so we will get into the next part here after we take a quick break. So let's go ahead and head to commercial, and we will pick up with the pending s- sanctions and where we're at with that. Yeah, uh, if you want to avoid these commercials on the Patreon feed, just be sure to go to uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can get a uh, specialized podcast feed just for you that has no commercials and comes out many hours, and in some cases a day or so, uh, but well in advance of the actual podcast release. So early access, no commercials, patreon.thesloopcast.com. All right, Kyle. Um, we don't need to do the, I don't know if we need to go into super detail on the pending sanctions. Um, it is what it is. Like it's well documented. I want to spend some time on the players, so I don't want to waste too much time here. Um, I, ex- I'm just going to say, I expect the, I expect it to be harsh. I, we, we recently saw Florida state get hammered pretty hard for essentially doing what every coach in college football is doing right now, which was introduce a player uh, as a recruit, not a player, a a recruit, introducing a recruit to the local NIL at Florida State. That's all he did. And Florida State cooperated with the investigation. Florida State may have even self-reported. I don't remember that part point is is that florida state got kind of hammered for that and that is such a nothing burger i'm gonna throw the word burger in there because it's just a hamburger but that is such a nothing burger compared to both of the sanctions that michigan are currently facing yep two it's two investigations not just one it's two separate ones that's going on too so yeah it's yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's the NCAA, no, knowing the NCAA, it may not know for a while still, but I expect it to happen before spring football. I, I, I expect an announcement from the NCAA before spring football, as far as what the fate of Michigan will be. And if it doesn't hit that deadline, I expect it to hit the deadline after, uh, before the season. I don't right, expect let's, this let's, to drag on past the season. All right, let's go ahead and start on. Let's go and move on to the roster then here, Jared. Um, yeah, so it's worth noting too um, when we're talking about the roster that Michigan was facing two separate transfer windows before now and the start of the season as well too because you got one with, with Harbaugh signing with the Chargers and that will be closed 30 days after. So that would be... February 23rd. Then you have the next one coming up in middle of April for, for two weeks for a spring transfer as well too. So yeah, the same one that everyone we'll, has in yep. April. So yeah, we'll, but we'll see here. So all right, let's, let's start with the quarterback. We'll start with the quarterback here. JJ McCarthy gone. Who's, who's, who's left here? Who's left? There's, I think the big name, the big name that everybody <laughs> that looks at is, well, I, I get. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> the one, the, the name that, that you hear, the name that you hear a lot from, who's going to take over at the quarterback position next year is Alex Orgy. Yeah, uh, he's a twenty twenty two. Um, he's a twenty twenty two get kid, thirtieth quarterback overall, and so far has had just one passing attempt in his yeah. career. And I'm just going to say this, the football gods taketh away, but the football gods also giveth. We lose Penix. We get Orgy. We lose Orgy. We gain Orgy, yes. <laughs> Thank you, football gods. Um, yeah, Kyle, on the Michigan roster right now, there is a collective 
among the quarterbacks. I don't know if there's like a running back or a receiver with a pass attempt. So don't don't hold me the total fire on this. But in the quarterback room, let's put it that way. In the quarterback room, there are a career six passing attempts. Six passing attempts in the entire Michigan quarterback room right now. Um, I'll say this: they do have, they do have freshman Jaden Davis, Harb's quarterback guru. Yeah, I mean to to be fair, their starter didn't get a lot of reps either. <laughs> he didn't have a lot of passing attempts. Um, but they do have freshman Jaden Davis. I would not be shocked. I think Michigan, Michigan. I think Michigan has to face Texas early in the season. Uh, we talked about this. Was it Kyle? Is it just last week? Like it's a decent possibility that by the end of September, by the we time did. we did, by the time Michigan plays their first game in October, they might be five hundred. They might go. They might go two and two. Is what I'm trying to say. Michigan might go two and two to start the season. It would not surprise me. That would be beautiful. Says gangland. I, I don't even, that's not even a stretch in my opinion. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a wild prediction. We did wild predictions last week. I don't think Michigan starting the season two for two is a wild prediction. I think it's very possible. Yeah, a it's, loss it's, to USC and a loss to Texas. The loss, Very possible. I'll, I'll put a loss, possibly a loss, heading over to Seattle as well too. Before, three and three. Before their, uh, before yeah, before their their first uh, bye week. Yeah. So, point is, is that I wouldn't be surprised if the season starts with say orgy. But then after a slow start, that maybe they throw Jaden Davis in there and see what he can do. He is yep. by far, you know, just looking at recruiting rankings and recruiting rankings alone, he is by far the most talented guy in the quarterback room right now. He just has, he's just, he's just a true freshman. That's, that's the issue. If when the wheels completely fall off uh, by the end of the year, do they duck us again? Oh, let's let's not let's not wish another pandemic on the world spikes. <laughs> so, yeah. So I totally expect to go, to go back circle here. I totally expect Alex to beat your starter. Uh, the other Jaden, uh, Jared mentioned uh, freshman Jaden Davis coming in here, but the other Jaden uh, Denegal has the most pass attempts. Of any of any quarterbacks current on the current roster right now with five, who is a 2022 kid as well and was the 28th overall quarterback in that class as well. Yeah, and I, for for what it's worth, I have no idea between Orgy and Denigal like who's going to start. Like I I I don't know. Like neither of them have really. Orgy appeared to be the backup last year. Is. Mm -hmm. But he maybe was the backup because he was a run guy. Maybe if you want, if you're looking for a, a guy to totally take over your office, maybe it becomes Denigal. I I don't know. Yeah, probably the biggest biggest news out of um, Michigan's offense side here is the return return of uh, Donovan Edwards. Donovan one Edwards of the coming few, back. One of the few pieces of good news as far as players returning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, do you I, think I, they I, just start the freshman? We, Jaden Davis, I, 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 I'm not going to say no to that. He ha only fully, has one less pass attempt in college football than Alex Orgy. He was there two years longer. Um, I fully expect Donovan Edwards to get many carries, many carries, uh, especially early on here, especially when you have, you're replacing six offensive linemen. Well, we'll get to that on later, the, on, yeah, yeah. Re replace six offensive linemen, and your two of your top three pass catchers are gone as well, too. It's, Stop peeking forward in the notes, be, Kyle. It is heavy, heavy Donovan Edwards to to start this season off. But then after that, who's who's behind Edwards? Who, who's behind Edwards? You got uh, Cabana, 
who was the 10th overall running back for the 2023 class. Okay, we'll, we'll see what he does. And then you have Benjamin Hall. Yeah. And then Jordan Marshall and Makai Kapana, Kapana uh, are your other running backs there. So, I mean, I think, I think those it, are their... it could be, I mean, depending on how, how uh, Kapana does, maybe just, maybe just the Donovan Edwards show. Jordan Marshall is incredibly talented. He's Mr. Ohio football for the 2023 season. Uh, Kyle, don't totally rule out um, linebacker turned running back Ken Mullings. Uh, he's not the most talented guy in the room, but he is a fifth year senior. Um, so I would say don't rule him out. Uh, but early favorite would probably be Cole Cabana for the second running back. In my opinion, okay. mm-hmm. um, Mullings might be more of a fullback split end kind of guy. Maybe I'm I'm not really maybe. sure. But as far as the running back, as far as the running back room goes, this is one of their better rooms on the offensive side. Um, mm-hmm. They bring back an incredibly experienced player, and the talent behind him, although. You know, you have one guy who's pretty experienced, maybe not super physically gifted, but highly experienced. And they have a, then they have like a bunch of guys, uh, most notably Cabana and Marshall, who are yeah. incredibly talented, but neither yep. of them have experience. Yep. All right, let's let's talk about the receivers and tight ends here. Mentioned, uh, so you're losing, they're losing Roman Wilson and Cornelius Johnson. Um. Loveland is returning, so that I think that's going to be their Huge. their top target. You, you got you got a new quarterback. You always you always look for that big tight end. So expect a lot of looks to Loveland early on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Loveland's going to play a huge what's it, what's, role in this what's, offense. But what's in what? What's there after that? Then here, Jared. What's there? As far as, well, okay, so the tight end room, I think, is kind of like the running back room. You have one, like, very good player returning. Um, They do lose their second tight end, so it's kind of the inverse of the running back in this situation. Um, mm-hmm. uh, A.J. Barner. Um, Barner was primarily a backup, but still, a, like, a reliable clutch pass catcher. Caught it 22 times for 250 yards. Um and then they have uh, two really impressive incoming freshmen, um, Brady Prescorn and Hogan Hansen. Um, they were both top 20 tight ends in the 2024 class. So talented guys coming in. Um, are they sneaky fast? I would s- I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, the... As far as the wide receiver, I, I they also lost um, Matthew Hibner to the transfer portal, but I don't, I don't, see, I, 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 I feel like the room and I feel like the tight end room is deep enough that I don't think losing Hibner is going to be some sort of huge loss for them. Um, yeah. And again, the the two wide receivers, their two primary wide receivers, Wilson and Johnson, are both gone. Collectively caught the ball ninety five times for almost fourteen hundred yards and thirteen touchdowns. Um, combined the rest of their wide receiver room. Uh, the returning wide receiver stats last year, 40 catches for 450 yards. That's how much experience is coming back in the wide receiver room. Not a lot. Um, nope, not a lot. And only four touchdowns. Um, they also lost uh, Darius Clemens, who was a uh, pretty highly ranked uh, top 150 overall player um, to the transfer portal. He's off to Oregon State. He's from Oregon. If you're wondering why Oregon State, he is from Oregon. Uh, So he's off via the transfer portal to Oregon State. Um, An experience doesn't necessarily mean not talented. Um, They they do have some, they do have some promising talent uh, in the wide receiver room. Um, you have, uh, Morgan returning, um, and like 
Morgan was the 64th best wide receiver in the 2023 class, but don't let that fool you. Um, he's already sort of proven to be a overachiever. Like he's not the 60, he was not the 64th best. <laughs> Gangland says he doesn't have hands. He is a true freshman. He was a true freshman. I mean, you can teach a guy to catch. Um, he was not the 64th best wide receiver in the 2023 class. He's already proven that. Um, now, is he a wide receiver number one? He comes across as more like a slot guy to me. Yeah. Um, which is fine. It's great to have a good slot guy. Um, but I don't necessarily see him as like a wide receiver number one sort of guy. Um, they return Morris who was the uh, 18th wide receiver in the 2022 class and a uh, young man named English, who was the 19th wide receiver in the 2023 class. Uh, so there are guys there. You have, you have two top 20 wide receivers. You have an overachieving Morgan. Um, and they have two wide receivers coming in uh, as freshmen their recruiting numbers aren't impressive. The 42nd yep. and 62nd wide receivers in the 2024 class. Yep, yep. Could they be better than that? Maybe. 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 Recruiting rankings are not perfect. Michigan has done a good job in the past finding diamonds in the rough. Guys who are underranked, they've done a good job of that in the past. Keep an eye on Goodwin and Stewart and we'll find out. All right, All right, let's move on to the offensive line, Jared. Yeah, it's let's move on just, to the offensive line. Just just a couple minutes here on the offensive line oh, here. That's I not mentioned possible, earlier. Okay. Six offensive linemen off to the NFL. Uh yeah. that's that's three tackles, two guards, and their center. These are all that's, per snap count. They're most ta- these are their six most experienced guys on the team by snap count. Um it's a massive turnover. And by the way, all six of them expected to be drafted. If you wonder, gee, why was Michigan so good last year? They have stayed six draftable offensive linemen. They might have more. I don't think they're all five going to be bad on this offensive line that are that's coming in this year. So they have to play actual college students now. Yeah, some some of those guys are pretty old, if we're being honest. Uh, but they also got yeah. some guys. They got some of those COVID kids on the on the team. Got some of those COVID kids on the team. They still got a couple left too. Um, yeah. So and they did. Kyle, lo- they did lose a pair. They did lose a pair um, to the transfer portal, but I don't think from from what we've seen, they were no. going to really contribute. No, I, I don't. I don't think. There. Weirdly enough, losing six offensive linemen, they still have like a pretty, when I say decent selection, I mean, numbers wise, I don't know how, I don't know how good they all are. Yeah. I mean, there's I mean, still any left gangland says, yeah, yeah, they lost eight offensive linemen. Now, again, two of them are off to the portal and I don't want to say anything bad. I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about them. I'll say that. I don't want to say anything bad yeah. about them. They, but they six of get, them are drafted or NFL draftable. They did get one um, interior lineman transfer from Northwestern that's coming over to Michigan as well. A uh, great Josh, pickup. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's uh, obviously you you lose six six players. You're gonna you're gonna take anybody that you can here. Uh, yeah, but let's let's not say it like that. This Northwestern interior offensive lineman is a very good player. Um. Now, could they, especially in the spring, be reaching out for anyone with a pulse to try and fill some gaps in the offensive line? Maybe, but that's that's not him. The Northwestern, that is not him. Yep. All right. Uh, best guess, the tackles. Um, you have Miles Hinton, who is surprisingly experienced for not being one of the sixth most experienced offensive linemen on the team last year. Um, he transferred in from Stanford last season. Uh, he started five games for Michigan last year. 
and again, he's the, he's the seventh most experienced offensive lineman on the team last year. Um, he got a lot of playing time in like their giant jumbo packages. Um, he started 16 games at Stanford. Um, he's probably going to be the right tackle at Michigan, but maybe he's a, maybe he'll switch over to left tackle. Um, but regardless, I expect Miles Hinton to start at tackle for Michigan this year. I think he's, he, he is, I would say one of two guys who I will say will be a starter for Michigan on the offensive line next year, for sure. Okay. Um, as far as the other tackle spot goes, you have a few different guys. Um, you have Giovanni L. Uh, L. Hattie. L. Hattie. I'm gonna go with L. Hattie. I'm probably wrong. Um, and then you have uh, probably the other guy with that spot is Jeffrey Percy. Hadi. Gangland says Hadi. I'm going I'm to trust him on that. Giovanni El Hadi. So, yeah, uh, both uh, somewhat highly ranked guys in their respective recruiting classes. Uh, Percy's a year older. So one of those two guys is probably your other tackle. Kyle, what do you think about the interior? Interior-wise, I think there's a few names here. Um, would it not surprise me if um, El Hadi would also maybe move into the in interior line as well, depending on who may get that left left tackle position if it's not him. Uh, I would say the loser of that battle could very well move inside, whether it be Hadi or Percy. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, Crippen, uh, Greg Crippen is a, is a name that you can see playing in the interior as well as uh, Raheem Anderson. Um, probably most likely he's going to be playing that center position here. One of the two of them. Um, yeah. Uh, looking at some other names here. I'm just, just scroll up real quick. Some other names here that I'm seeing here. Uh, Josh, Josh Preeb. Josh Preeb as well. Preeb. And Amir Herring is, another, uh, is a couple other names to keep an eye out for. Um, mentioned Josh um, uh, recently. So I think I think there's He's a the probably Northwestern. Some, correct. Yep. So I think those are going to be probably the names that you're going to hear as your, as your starters for Michigan. Yeah. It, Preeb and, and Hinton are for sure starters. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. say that. Um, they're the two most experienced guys on the team for sure. Um, yep. One, and, and one's and a tackle, wanna, one's a guard. Yeah. I know you want to talk, talk more about the offensive line here, but we do got to move on here. But before we move on to the defensive side, Jerry, we'll get, take a, another quick ad break here. and We will get to the defensive side of this um, Michigan team. Yeah. Once again, uh, you can avoid these ads by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com. You get early access to episodes, premium access to the Discord server, and of course, uh, ad-free podcast experience with your very own RSS feed, or you can just listen straight through the Patreon app. All right, Kyle, let's move on to the defense. Um, so there, there's a weird thing happening here with Michigan on the coaching side. They're bringing back a lot of their core offensive coaching guys, but are decimated on the defensive coaching side. As far as players are concerned, we have the exact opposite. They're yeah, they, Michigan they got, they totally talent coming. Totally disassembled the offensive the offensive talent. They only have two returning starters on offense. Well, technically Edwards wasn't even a starter. So they only have one returning starter on offense, and that's Colston Loveland, who, for what it's worth, is maybe the most attractive player on the team as far as the transfer portal window is concerned. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but from the defensive side, not bad. O honestly, not bad. Um, not bad. I do want, do want to say they got a, key, they got a big, they did get a big time uh, transfer portal coming into the uh, kid out of uh, Maryland uh, Barham as well. Yeah. A very, very talented 
uh, linebacker to come in. So that, that was a big, big get for, for Michigan here. Now I will say this, um, while Michigan has a great starting lineup as far as their defense is concerned, I feel feel like they got a good starting 11. Their depth is an issue almost across the board. Uh, I mean, I mean, almost across you, the board. You, you kind of, you kind of expect that when you're losing 44 super seniors. Yes. All right. Um, defensive tackles. They lose uh, impact player Chris Jenkins and a very good contributing depth player in Cam Goody. Um, but but you do return Graham. Graham going to be one of the, the best defensive linemen. Yeah, uh, Graham. Graham, one of the best defensive linemen in the country, returning. And then yeah, Jared mentioned a uh, Kenneth Grant as well. Um, are going to be the two defensive tackles for for Michigan, just hands down. And they do have Rashawn Benny uh, returning, who I think is an absolutely like solid rotational depth player for Michigan. Um, past that, though. Past that is sketchy. Um, yeah. So, so edge. if we look at the edge, yep, if we look at the edge rushers, um, you do have Derek Moore, uh, who was a who was a key key recruiting piece for Michigan a couple of years ago. Um he'll he'll be he'll be starting at, at one of the edge rushing positions there. And uh Josiah Stewart is another is another name to keep an eye out for as well. So I th- I think those are going to be your two your two defensive ends, uh Moore and Stewart. Yeah um Stewart, if you don't remember, uh, he's kind of an undersized guy, uh, started off his career at Coastal Carolina. Uh, they picked him up out of the transfer portal last year. Um, they lost, they lose uh, Braden McGregor and Jalen uh, Harrell, uh, who were uh, probably their two best edge rushers last year, um, with respect to Josiah Stewart. Uh, but yeah, both McGregor and Harrell are off to the NFL who combined for 11 sacks and three forced fumbles last year. Mm-hmm. Again, two really solid guys for their edge rushing. Ugh, beyond that. Um, they, they do have a highly rated redshirt freshman in Anoeta. He's worth keeping an eye on if he develops in, you know, so he, he could, he could work his way into the rotation. Uh, but as far as experience, it doesn't go past the two guys. Uh, so yeah, that's about where we're at on the defensive line. Do you have two really good or, you know, defensive line might not be the correct way of saying that. Cause a lot of the edge rushers at Michigan are linebackers, but as far as your like front four front five guys you have four really good starters and maybe one really good backup maybe two really good backups you know depending upon where etta is in his development linebackers kyle what do you think about their linebackers um good question <laughs> good question so you got um you, you lose bennett and Polston. Off to the off to the NFL here, uh, both key contributors uh, mentioned <laughs> key, earlier. Key contributors really underselling it, Kyle. Um, <laughs> Col- Colson led the team with ninety five tackles, and Bennett was the second leading tackler on the team with sixty five. Yes, uh, mentioned uh, Barham. I I totally expect him to be one of one of the linebacking positions. I think he might fit in the the will position. I, I believe um, Ernest I Hausman name, will probably be the other starting linebacker or the starting inside linebacker. Um, yep. Despite not starting, he was the third place tackler on the team with 46 tackles last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he literally had zero starts last year um, and still amassed 46 tackles was still the third leading tackler on the team 
uh, uh, you know, probably bodes really well for the linebacker position for Michigan. A really good transfer, uh, an incredibly experienced backup player. Um, that's, you know, again, I, th- I feel like that's, you have, despite losing two highly rated NFL guys, um, they, they still have two good players that will start on the team. However, this pattern keeps repeating. Um, you know, they have these solid, they have just enough solid starters, uh, but the depth is inexperienced and unproven. Um, keep an eye on uh, Jason Hood, Jimmy uh, Rodler. Um, one of those two guys will likely be the third guy, but neither of those guys have serious experience. Just, just seeing this, though, Jared. Uh, Speaking of the linebackers, uh, for their 2024 class, uh, Jaden Smith, who is out of the North Carolina area, mm-hmm. uh, just requested um, release of his NIL. I mean, I am uh, like, you know, may, maybe that first conversation with Will Wink didn't go well. Yeah. This is yeah, why, by the way, yeah, never mind. Yeah, let's. Uh, we we don't have time for a. Corners. We don't have time <laughs> yeah, for a early signing here. period rant right now. Yep. All right, corners here, Jared. Uh, they're. I think this might be. Maybe their strongest. Well, their their defensive tackles are their strongest point. I think this might be their second. I, their second strongest, maybe. Uh, strongest no. point in this. No, Will Will Johnson's they, they amazing. Do, Yep, they do. They do get Will Johnson. Yes, they do and get him back. I can sort of, you know, we, we can talk about like transfer portal stuff. Their defensive tackles are two very attractive transfer portal targets. Um, Colston Loveland's a really attractive transfer portal target. I don't talk about Will Johnson in that way, not because he's not the best player on the team, because he might be the best player on the team. Very easily make that argument. It's just that, like, he's a Michigan guy through and through. He's a Michigan legacy. He's from Dearborn. Will Johnson's not going. He, Will Johnson will go down with the ship in Michigan. Um. So when I talk about, like, oh, transfer portal guys, I'm not talking about Will Johnson for that reason. Um, yeah. But, they, you know, Will Johnson was cornerback one. He'll be cornerback one again this year. Uh, cornerback two, Josh Wallace, off to the NFL. Um. They lose Cameron Calhoun, who was a four-star top 250 player out of the 2022 class. He transfers to Utah. Um, Marion Walker transfers to Ole Miss. So who's going to be cornerback two? Mikhail, this is kind of, I push back as far as like, this might be the best, but I think Will Johnson may be the best player on the team, but I, yeah. I don't know who their cornerback two is right now. Um, Jair Hill, one of the top recruits. I, th- I think it's going to 20... be Jair Hill. I think it's going to be Jair Hill. And by the way, you're probably right. Uh, and he might be fine. Uh, he's an incredibly highly uh, top, yeah. you know, t- uh, highly rated recruit from the 2023 class. So he'll be coming into his second year. Um, you have Miles Pollard and Cody Jones entering their third years, but not much experience in those three years. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, Jaden McBurrows uh, enters 2024 with prob- probably the most experienced cornerback on the team, not named Will Johnson, but he's one of the guys who might be playing in that. They have like a nickel hybrid sort of role, much like Ohio state yeah. does. Uh, you might see McBurrows go there. Um, corners who have to learn how to cover now. It's it's, it is more difficult when you don't know the other team's plays. Um, then that is true. <laughs> and heavy man pressure defense. Oh, and it's a heavy man pressure defense. Yeah, that that might be one of the new, even though the new defensive coordinators from the same coaching tree, he is a little bit more of a a gambler as far as his play calling is concerned. It's a very pressure, as Gangland points out, a very pressure-oriented defense he likes to call. 
Um, so, so what about the the safeties then? I know I know you were talking a little bit about the the Nickelback there or the hybrid. Um, yeah, McBurrows definitely fits that there, but the safeties here. He okay. does fit they it. Got, they got, they got, they, they, they got, they got uh, a lot of experience back here. McBurrows, back. McBurrows does fit that role. The problem in my mind is, I think it depends, but like, where is Jair Hill in his development? I think might help determine that because if Hill isn't ready to take over cornerback two, then they might be forced to put McBurrows there. Okay, fair is, enough. Is the point. And they do, Kyle. If you're talking about depth, like talented depth, the safety room, I think, might be their best room. Yeah, you're you're right. Now look looking re-looking at this here, you're you are right. They they do return Paige, Moore is back as well, and Keon Saab is is also back as well. So it's, three yeah, this is three talented, three experienced returners at the safety role. Um not not to mention like Two of their most promising young players are both safeties. Uh, with Barry and Hillman, their safety room's actually kind of stacked. It's realistic. It honestly, the only defensive room. No, I'm a well. Because you have to start two safety. They they don't have another room as deep as the safeties. Period is 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 what I'm saying. It. it you know, I, I don't know if, you know, and with all due respect to, to Paige and Moore, um, who are very good starters, they might not be superstar starters like Colston Loveland is, like Donovan Edwards is, like um, like uh, Jenkins or, or, excuse me, not Jenkins, uh, Grant or Graham are, but they have five guys who can play. Which is kind of why I'm thinking, even though McBurrows does fit that hybrid role really well, I think it kind of makes sense to maybe leave him at corner, again, depending upon where Jair Hill is at, and then maybe you move Keon Saab into that Nickelback Sanistral role. Um, and like I said, you also have Barry and Hillman, who are very talented young players. Um, yep. But speaking of Sanistral again, one of their best defensive players off to the NFL. Um, we talked a lot about that nickel role, that hybrid defensive back role, that fifth cornerback. Um, incredibly talented player. Um, he had 44 tackles, uh, two sacks, six interceptions, and two touchdowns for Michigan last year. Um, include, including 14 uh, tackles in the playoffs alone. Uh Impact player for their defense. Another guy gone to the NFL. And, you know, again, Saab, McBurrows, Barry, Hillman, one of those guys or some combination of those guys likely to take over that room. Um, Again, I think. So what I'm taking. So what I'm taking from this, from this whole, from this whole Michigan team that we've just gone over offense, defense, Defense is going to have to carry this team this year is, is what I'm is what I'm hearing here. In order in order to have in order for Michigan to have any success, they need to they need a the defense has to carry them has to carry them uh, for the 2024 season. You say that, and from an on the field talent standpoint, you're absolutely correct. But they only have one defensive coach on the staff right now. They do. I mean, they'll, they'll fill it in. They'll they'll fill those coaches in, but I'm not going to say how great. Unless they can run the ball like they have be. the past few years, Gangland they yeah. won't. Again, they lost six they NFL lost. caliber offensive linemen to the NFL. Yeah. And considering that, by the way, they're going to have. They're probably going to have six offensive. When's the last time a team had six offensive? I mean, that's insanely impressive. Like, I'm not trying to butter Michigan bread here, but that's insane. I think it's six offensive linemen drafted into one draft. That's insane. Um, yeah. And it's it's odd that 
they will have a relatively experienced offensive line coming back considering that. Um, now, one of those guys mm-hmm. is a transfer portal guy, so that help kind of explains it, but... It, it does, yeah. They had four experienced tackles on their team last year. Three of them leave. You know, like I said, they do get Miles Hinton back. But their offensive line depth... Again, like, the offensive line, we can look at it and we can say, you know, they should be able to piece together a decent five guys. And by the way, I think they will. I think they will piece together a decent five guys. Only two of those guys are going to have any experience. They're not going to have, like, this glut of talent to do these six, seven-man offensive line jumbo packages like they have the past two years. That ta- They don't have that anymore. And then, like, like with the defense, there's no room for injury. Like, injuries happen. Mm-hmm. There's no depth anywhere on this team except the safety position. You could argue maybe the running back position because you can get away with playing inexperienced guys on at, at running back, right? So you could make, you know, you could make the argument that they have depth at running back as well. Unproven depth, but depth is where they're at at running back. You can get away with it at running back. But they don't have depth anywhere on this team except the safety room. Again, if you look at the offensive line, you know, if you start, you start Hinton, you start Hadi, you start Piercy. So there's five, or there's three guys. Um, you start uh preby there's four and then you have Crippen and Anderson one of them will be the center and the other you know one of them might start at guard or you might be the loser of the offensive tackle position might start at guard but you have like one backup offensive lineman is the point yeah the point is, is they have I, like I think- six guys I, th- I think that should wrap it up here, Jared. Uh, I know, I know this this was going to go a little bit over here, but um, wanted to. Yeah, we're not we're not bad considering where I thought this could have gone. <laughs> yeah, but no, the, no, this was. I think this was, this was really good here. Um, really going over, just anticipation of who. They're just in some names to keep it. Just to keep some names out for for Michigan here, but yeah, overall, yeah, it's nowhere nowhere near the, if the I, team that they were in 2023. If I were a Michigan fan, yeah, and we haven't got any sanctions yet, as Gangland points out in the chat. Yeah. We haven't even taken into account any sort of sanctions yet. Like, mm-hmm. and what, what really hurts Michigan is that their defense, if they could have returned some of their defensive coaching staff, then... Yeah. Then maybe, yeah. Because... You know, as you said, what I'm hearing is this is going to be a defensive team. Maybe. It kind of depends upon the... They, they got one side of the team gutted by coaching departure and another side of the team gutted by player departure. And by the way, the defensive side was also gutted by player departure. It's just that they had so much depth there that they're going to survive it. They had so much defensive depth that they could survive that gutting. Mm-hmm. and that just isn't the case on the offensive line or, or well not the case on the offensive line but also not the case in the offense they're not going to survive that gutting and i think the, that's it jared i think i think that is it i think we can go ahead and wrap up today's episode all, all of this is evidence to my five and six or excuse me six and so whatever it is what did I say? Six and seven on last week's episode. My prediction for Michigan. Yep. You sure did. It's not. Um, uh, it's in, they're in trouble. They're in deep trouble next year, even if they stay healthy yeah, but, and without taking additional but, sanctions into consideration. They're they're in deep trouble next year. Yes. Lots of lots of backup Buckeye news here. 
um, this past week, Jared. Uh, Hold on, let me do the thing. Real... Everyone visit patreon.thesloopcast.com. Everyone, uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. A lot of, you know, you can you can watch us both on our YouTube channel and the Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel. Uh, you can obviously listen to us in podcast form. Uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, and then we have two t-shirt stores. Uh, one of them is merch.thesloopcast.com and the other one is 7071.thesloopcast.com you can buy a bunch of uh, Ohio branded stuff like the t-shirt I'm wearing right now which is an Athens Ohio t-shirt there's lots of uh, town specific shirts on there a lot of Ohio stuff Cal do anything in Kyle's Corner Uh, real quick things Um, Bill O'Brien out Chip Kelly in big deal (laughs) We'll cover I think we'll <laughs> try to cover more about it in our in our next week's episode here possibly um other other Buckeye news here you got CJ Stroud offensive rookie of the year um that's like what is that like six Buckeyes in eight years or something like that something ridiculous yeah just, um just 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 you wait and you just just write Marvin Harrison's yeah. name on it for next year now <laughs> Buckeyes basketball finally get get a win. I, I think that's big news. <laughs> and um, eh, it was at home against the third worst okay, team it's, in it's the still, Big Ten. It, it's still it's still a win that they need. And uh, Buckeye wrestler Sammy Sosa possibly returning this year if needed. I'm sorry. What? Uh-huh, I'm sorry, yeah. what, what did you say? If need if if there if there is a potential that there will be a national title run, Sasso will be will be returning, but he is hopeful for to Sasso? return for the twenty twenty four season. Okay. I, I I'm not gonna lie, Kyle, I kinda zoned out there. And I and I thought you were talking about Sammy Sosa, and I'm not I'm not sure what 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 are we talking no, no, about? No. Not Sosa, yeah. What what are we talking about? <laughs> I'm lost. Buckeye wrestler, remember Sammy? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, Sasso. Yes. I got very confused um, there it. for a second. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's it. Um, oh, and can't can't forget about Cameron Hayward, um, Walter Payton, Man of the Year as well. Two Buckeyes with with uh, NFL awards at the end of the year. You know. That's it, but that's it. That's it. That's that is, moment. Yeah. That's that's all that's all I got here, Jared, as we go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh tonight's music is a Cleveland based band called X Astronaut. Uh, once again, X Astronaut, E X Dash Astronaut. Um, we'll be playing one of their songs then today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is X Astronaut.